Hello, this is Eve Kristoff, your love life coach. And I'm here today to help you understand how to follow your heart consistently. So sometimes we wonder, what does it mean to follow our heart? Because our mind gets in the way. There can be so many good looking options and so many shoulds and the feeling of wanting to be a good person and do the right thing. Uh, but this is the secret to following your heart. Because if you do follow your heart consistently, if you get really good at this, what's going to happen is that your life will unfold into more heart. That means more love, more love life, <laughs> more fire, more fun, more joy, more passion. Okay, so here's the one thing to keep in mind when you're trying to understand how to follow your heart. All you need to realize is that the heart only knows yes, 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 or the heart is silent. If there's silence, that's a no. But the heart's not going to go, no, no, don't do that, and I'm, 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 it's not a mind apparatus, and it's not a negativity um, apparatus. The heart is yes, or silence, okay? So that's all you do, is you source into your yes, if it's there or not. And if it's not there, it's a no, it's, it's silence, and, and you don't have to justify your heart's truth. You, it's inexplainable, it's from a mysterious level of reality. Sometimes there's a yes to something that you don't think you should have a yes to, and it's just there. And if you follow that yes to an unexplainable, mysterious place, you will be amazed that your heart knows things your mind doesn't know. Here's a fun little story. I hope this inspires you. Basically, I want this bright sun just came onto me. Um, okay, where do I go? Um, okay, yeah. So, I got so good at this when I was in Mexico that I started to um, use the lighting of a candle to signify my heart time. So this is another thing that you can add into this process. Light a candle if you can when you're asking your heart to speak. So when we got to Mexico, uh, my my husband at the time was so used to me um, doing this candle thing where I got uh, guidance that he asked me to light a candle when we got there because we didn't know where we were going to live. I, I, I had had this spontaneous feeling that I needed to give birth to my baby in Mexico. <laughs> And he's so much of an adventurer like me that he took me on, he took me there. We just went with not much money at all. We just went there to um, allow me to be steeped in the magic of Guadalupe. I felt very connect connected to Mother Earth, the Corn Mother, and Guadalupe's um, motherly essence which permeates the culture down there. And her, her image is, is in tile work. Um, at every house gate. She's carved into verandas. She's um, at, at the end of the street there will be a little altar to her with candles at the end of every street. She will be in the middle of a cornfield, a little statue to her. Um, so I just knew I needed to go where she was, even though I'm not Catholic at all. Uh, and I did. So when we got there I lit the candle and asked, okay, where do we go for a place to live? There was no, um, it was a, we were out in really rural towns without, there's no newspapers or anything. And I was asking people and everybody's like, oh, I don't know, we don't, you know, people live here forever. They don't move and have places for rent usually. <laughs> they thought it was kind of weird. Why didn't I go to the city and rent a motel, you know? But I wanted a little house to give birth to my baby. <laughs> so as soon as I, <laughs> making my lipstick better, I'm sorry. <laughs> look at myself, it's so weird. Okay, so and if I try to look at the camera, I lose track of everything. Okay, well, sorry, I need a person there to talk to, it has to be me. 
so I, I asked the camera and I asked the candle and the candle goes go down the street till you see a dirt road turn right go up till you cross a little bridge after the bridge go up the hill you will see a tiny house that is yours <gasps> That's what the candle said. I had started to hear a clear voice from the candle. So I followed those instructions to the letter. Every road, bridge, everything existed. And there was the house, empty, at the top of the hill. I asked neighbors about it. They said, oh no, this woman has a terminal illness and she's never rented her house and she certainly won't rent it to Westerners. Um, but somehow, very easily, I found her, even though she was a city woman and we had an instant connection. I just loved her and I think she felt my love because she just sort of broke down and said you're meant to be in my home and she allowed me to paint it um, with murals and um, do special prayer flower motifs for her um, to thank her and it was a heavenly, heavenly abode for um, being pregnant with my daughter so try the candle thing. You're going to get more and more adept with how fire and your heart are connected. You can also do fire vigils. This is the other thing to be uh, more connected with your heart uh, on the big fire, the big heart in, in all of life. You can do an all-night fire where you come there with offerings. If you know any Native Americans in your area who can tell you what their offerings are, if they will um, be there for the beginning and the end of your quest. That would be nice um, to pay them something for that. Um, I did the Wichol offerings and the Wichol prayers to basically ancient traditions have a way of waking up the fire um, on a spiritual level so that when you are in your meditation with the fire it's not just a normal fire, it has a supernatural quality to it. Um, so basically I gave chocolate I gave tobacco, I gave copal, and the ritual was you offer your chocolate, you walk once around counterclockwise. You offer tobacco, walk once around counterclockwise. Offer copal, once around counterclockwise, and then some wood on the fire, you walk around twice counterclockwise. And this is such a, an ancient ritual that it evokes another level of ritual. Uh, while you're there with the fire and then you just open to the fire all night long you you open your heart you you listen to what the the fire is telling you you um, maybe have a journal there you lay there by the fire um, at a, um, with a little blanket you watch the stars you pray and for me the fire takes on this quality where in the embers in the flames i start to see my answers sometimes the fire speaks one time it spoke all night long to me and uh, i actually was in, in uh, by the ocean and somehow the wood i gathered made a spectacular rainbow fire maybe it was the minerals from the ocean but all night long the flames were literally rainbow colors green red blue purple, yellow, orange, magenta, it, it was it was spectacular and I didn't even know when morning came I was completely disoriented because the time went so quickly with the fire just speaking and speaking and speaking to me, every question I had. Um, you can get to that place. First just start with recognizing yes versus silence in your heart, okay? Silence is no, yes is yes. Yes is yes, or yes is yes, yes is yes, <laughs> but it's still yes. <laughs> okay, sacred fire, sacred heart, sacred love, follow your heart and love life, my darling. Connect with me at my link below at my email if you would like a love life coaching session. And please get my music because it will fill your heart with love. And all of the songs, most of them anyway, are really uh, connected to the spirits of nature and um, love and joy and loving life. And the intention is to help you when you hear those songs and those words, to just let them be mantras, mantras of living in a free, self-loving way. <laughs> Much love.